Hey, work from homers, Adam Schrader here. We love bringing you this podcast and thousands of you have proven that it's been helpful for you. But since time and online storage space aren't free, Narration and I wanted to come to you personally to ask for your financial support through Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash work from home show and help support the show. And we appreciate your support at any amount you choose. That's patreon.com slash work from home show. Thanks for your support. Let's get to the show. Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Work From Home Show. I'm your host, Naresh Vissa with Adam Trader. Today we have Becky Rappinchuk with us. And she is known as the Clean Mama. Becky is a natural cleaning and homekeeping expert, a wife and mom of three, and a very successful entrepreneur, probably the foremost expert when it comes to this space of homekeeping and cleaning. I thought it would be worthwhile to bring her on the show, do something a little bit different, step away from the business side of, of working from home, and talk about the hygienic cleanly cleanliness side of of working from home because as many people say i don't know what they say uh (laughs) cleanliness is next to godliness uh, as my mom used to say there you go as my mom used to say cleanliness is next to godliness and it does affect the way that we work from home that our kids study from home so becky is a blogger behind she is the blogger behind clean mama the leading online homekeeping community and she advises the world's leading lifestyle brands including martha stewart real simple better homes family circle samsung on how to clean up little and big messes she's also the go-to person for over 20 million readers who follow her online and buy her books her books have done extremely well she also has her own paper goods and signature cleaning products to give you the names of some of those multiple New York Times bestselling books. One is called Simply Clean, The Proven Method for Keeping Your Home Organized, Clean, and Beautiful in Just 10 Minutes a Day. Sounds pretty good. Also the author of Clean Mama's Guide to a Healthy Home, The Simple Room-by-Room Plan for a Natural Home. Also the book The Organically Clean Home, 150 Everyday Organic Cleaning Products You Can Make Yourself. The Natural Chemical Freeway, and the brand new book, Clean Mama's Guide to a Peaceful Home, Effortless Systems, and Joyful Rituals for a Calm, Cozy Home. Becky, thank you so much for joining us on the Work From Home show. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and I want to start by talking about working from home, because one of the things, what I noticed when I started working from home in 2013, you're now at home. 24 hours. And if you're going to be at home 24 hours compared to when I used to work at an office, I would only be home for, uh, if you take away sleeping in the bed, I'd only be home for three to four hours uh, a day. The house tends to get dirtier when you're home for 24 hours. And then you add in a spouse who's now working from home. And then you add in kids who are doing school from home. What are your best tips to keeping clean to all, for all our work from homers out there? Yeah, it is definitely, uh, uh, it can be a challenge. And uh, I have three kids and we've been doing work from home, school from home, uh, restaurant. (laughs) I mean, it's everything is our home. And I think that the main thing that, that we need to concentrate on is taking those, like actually doing that reset. So if you're doing school, you're ending it at some point. And when you end it, you put those things away. Uh, when you're doing work, the end of the work day, you're putting your work day things away. Whether Even if you have just a basket to put things in or a bin, you're actually like putting those things away instead of loud, leaving them throughout the home. Because if we're just leaving things strewn from one end of the home to the other or in this place or in that place, you're not 
able to actually have that work home divide or that school home divide. And it's, it's a stressor on our, um, it's a mental stressor, physical stressor. And then also it can be emotional too, just from, um, having that extra clutter, extra things kind of invading our spaces as well. Now you say you have three kids. What do you recommend for one of the things that's helped my wife and I a lot during this time? And I've been working from home for a long time, but just in terms of not stressing ourselves out and giving ourselves more leeway as we started letting our older kids do some of the cleaning around the house. And we know it's not going to be as good as if we did it, but we need to kind of just let go of some things mm-hmm. and accept that it's be cleaner than if it wasn't cleaned. What are some of the chores that you and the cleaning that you let your kids do as they reach certain ages? Yeah, I, I definitely think kids should be involved, even from little teeny tiny kids sorting laundry, like two-year-olds um, separating socks from the rest of the clothes. I think that they can definitely help with that, um, especially when they're oh, like it's, two, three, it's so fantastic now that I have our kids <laughs> folding clothes. I just take the basket in there and dump it on their floor, and I'm like, go. <laughs> yeah, and well, fold. and if, you, if it's something that you've been doing since they were little, it makes it so much it, I mean, they still aren't going to be like, oh, yay, it's laundry time. I mean, no kid is, I mean, I don't, they're just not going to say that. But they understand that it, you know, you you start to fold it, sort it, whatever you're, you're doing with it, you put it away, and then you move on. And I think that it, that's, laundry is a huge thing because it, it does take up a lot of time. And when you can pass that off on kids that can put those things away themselves, it's it's good and it's a life skill. Um, making beds is something kids should be able to do even from a younger age all the way up. (laughs) And then as they get older, you can teach them how to change the sheets and put fresh sheets on the bed. Um, I have always, even when kids were little, like having a broom that they can, a broom and a dustpan that they can maneuver, like even younger kids, they can clean up the crumbs on the floor. When the kids are little, they enjoy doing those sorts of things. Um, dusting is something that kids can do, whether it's with a duster or like a microfiber cloth. Uh, there, there are definitely lots of, um, little things that you can, if you're doing it, have the kid shadow you and follow, follow along with you, um, and figure those things out. One thing you just mentioned there is the microfiber cloth. I was a little bit surprised Mm -hmm. to hear you say that with your, the, the clean mama, since the microfiber is supposedly, I learned this from my wife, when you wash them, they can kind of come apart a little bit and aren't as great for the environment from what I understand. So what are, what are your thoughts on that out of curiosity? Yeah. So microfiber is in everything. Like there are microfibers in athletic clothes, um, anything that isn't like a natural fiber. So if it's not hundred percent cotton or silk or um, linen, it has, it generally will have microfiber in it. So to, in my opinion, if you're, you can, you can say, okay, I'm not going to use microfiber cloths. I'm going to use this instead. But if you're using like paper towels instead of microfiber cloths, it's actually worse than a microfiber cloth. And then you might as well, like, if you're going to say that, then don't um, wear leggings or <laughs> athleisure wear or anything like that either, because it's still going to have those, the polyester fiber that is um, going back into the environment. I prefer to use uh, a catcher to catch those in the washing machine. That's my recommendation because I find that using microfiber um, cleaning cloths or reusable cleaning cloths are um, more like economical and eco-friendly if you are uh, filter- making sure that you're filtering that out. I want to talk about a, a topic that Adam has somewhat touched on, probably without even knowing it. And this is something that I read. Maybe you've done some research on this and talked about it in, in a few of your books. But traditionally, men um, have not done a lot of work around the, the house, traditionally, and things have obviously changed. I'll tell you, the culture that I come from, like, I look at my own family, and my dad did close to zero around the house. I wouldn't say zero, but he, he was he was pretty close um, to zero. And now that he's a, a grandfather, it was funny to see him, my mom making him do all this stuff, uh, which he had never done before, which, which comes second nature. But uh, I think it's important. Oh, I, I read something that it's important that that kids watch their their fathers doing stuff around the home 
because uh, like Adam said, he said he just drops up clothes and the kids start folding and doing all this stuff. When they see their their fathers doing work around the house, then they are more encouraged to to do stuff. And I'm guilty of this because I would see, oh, my dad's not doing anything, so I don't need to do anything. And then uh, I fell in love, got married, and realized, well, I got to actually do a lot more stuff. Um, and then also living alone, you you learn that you have to get by by doing stuff on your own, even if it's not that great. So I just wanted to make those points. And I don't know if you touch on those topics at all in your books. Yeah, I talk a lot about um, delegation and making sure that people are like, it's a it's a home that we, we're all living in this home. And we are definitely, um, if you make the mess, you pick it up. I, you know, like, if like my husband works outside of the home, I work from home. And so I'm home all day. So I can't expect him to put a load of laundry in at noon because he's not here. But I can, well, he can, he will usually say, hey, can you just throw my clothes in? I forgot to do it. But then he will fold them and put them away. And so we definitely, um, like, I, I think there, some of it depends on proximity. But I do think that the pandemic has created like a realization of how much actually gets done during the day for those people that were outside of the home um, and now are at home working from home. I think you're, it's, it's really, I mean, if nothing else, I think it's enlightened um, people that what, what actually has to happen in a home to make it run smoothly. Sometimes, I mean, the bathrooms need to be clean and the floors need to be vacuumed and pitching on in collectively is really helpful and also showing kids like there's no in our home there's no real like I mean we just all pitch in and help out and if there's something that needs to be done and and I need help with it or or if my husband needs help with it we just say hey help me with this or hey I need help with that can you you know help with that that's we kind of have more of like a um we like there is no division of labor like we all just kind of pitch in and help and um that's part of part of my routine and I I do touch on that with that too yeah and then as, as far we talked about making the bed I've always wondered because uh, again this is I don't want to say this is new to me but I I'm not an expert on this stuff but uh as far as making the bed goes I've never quite understood why like why do we make our beds and <laughs> I right. even we don't <laughs> <laughs> And and on top of that, I read somewhere, and you'll probably debunk this, but I read somewhere that making your bed is actually uh, bad because when you sleep, you're releasing all these, I guess, kind of like bugs, bed bugs, or you're releasing not bed stuff, bugs, but like <laughs> stuff to your body that's not yeah. good. And so if you're you releasing bed bugs, alone, we got problems, Nourish. <laughs> <laughs> you're releasing something from your body when you sleep for for eight hours and then when you set the bed now you're spreading all that around and it's just making everything dirtier so I guess that's two questions is well, why do we make our beds and then talk a little, little bit about what whether that's true or not as far as the stuff that's coming out from your body well the the theory is that like you sweat when you sleep um and then you also there's like dust mites um that yeah, it's are, dust mites yeah. <laughs> um, and, and they will, the dust mites will like feed on your dust, <laughs> essentially, or skin flakes that, and so, and that's on your bed. So my recommendation to start with is to you wash your sheets every week. So we wash our sheets on Saturday, that takes care of that portion of it. Now, as far as like a freshly made bed, you can, some people say to wait like 15 minutes to an hour after you get out of bed so that the bed air is out uh, and then, and then make your bed. And some people say, well, I'm not going to make my bed at all because, you know, now it's just making it worse. I definitely make, we make our beds every day and I like the feeling of, I think it pulls the room together. It takes about a minute and um, then that's like, it's a personal preference. But if the main, the main thing to remember is to, you need to be washing your sheets regularly. Well, every week to two weeks is helpful for um, sanitary purposes and to keep the dust mites down. You also want to keep a pillow protector on your pillows so that um, you're not 
it, it help, and that will help with allergens. If you have allergies or if anyone has allergies in your house, dust mites are a problem. That's another reason why you want to be washing your, um, your sheets weekly too. But um, the main thing is like that, just keeping the sheets clean, that's going to take care of the dust mites. That kind of debunks the, you know, not making the bed thing. I think but now I know why I have such a strong <laughs> immune system. <laughs> I think when you were talking about kind of people seeing the work that has to be done around the house, I think one of the most eye-opening things for my family has been when the kids started unloading the dishwasher and they started realizing they they actually asked us like how do why how do we run the dishes so often? It's like, well, there's six of us. We're eating at home all the time, you know. When if you use a new plate for every meal, you know, instead of like rinsing right. off your plate and reusing it. So that was, just, it made me think of that. But when it comes to actually cleaning the house, what household things, my wife started making cleaners a few years ago and I thought it was like the weirdest thing ever because I was like, oh, you're just mixing these two really simple things together and now you expect it to work as well as, you know, Windex or Pledge or whatever. And she was like, well, they just do the same thing. Can you talk a little bit about homemade versus store-made cleaners? Yeah, I am a huge proponent for homemade cleaners for a couple different reasons. One, you know what's what you're cleaning with. Um, two, you can decide like the potency of of what you're cleaning with and what you're using. You can also make sure that you are like if you run out, you don't have to go to the store. You probably have the ingredients in your home, and if you and, and you can clean with your children around, so you're not. Um, spraying any harmful chemicals in the air it's those are carcinogens generally and you don't want to you don't want to be filling your air with that because it's um, like they they've proven that people that clean homes for a living it's like smoking like two packs of cigarettes a day that's the damage that can be done to their lungs with harmful cleaning products so it's it's important to know that (laughs) <laughs> yeah, those artificial fragrances are, are, they're bad, but, um, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, it's definitely, that's one thing that, um, that's helpful and, um, store-bought cleaners, well, they're primarily water. So you're paying for the water with a little bit of, um, surfactant, um, or a cleaning agent that's in there. And so, you know, that's another reason, but you don't want the, you, you're not going to get the shelf life from a homemade cleaner that you would like with something that's not going to be able to sit on your shelf for a year because you don't have, um, the, I can't think of the name, but like the th- <laughs> whatever it keeps it shelf stable, yeah. you're not going to have that in there. Yeah. One of the things that, uh, that made me think of when you were talking about it is like, you look at even like homemade, soaps or anything like that and they don't do it's almost like people want to see the bubbles you know whenever Mm -hmm. you're scrubbing even though they're not needed they want to see the bubbles and a lot of cleaners sometimes it's like but i want to smell that that horrifically strong almost bleach like smell so that i know it's clean that's how i know and it's like no it's not how you know but it's how we're conditioned to think that it was known so just made me think of that yeah for sure in your book you talk about humidifiers and in one of your books you talk about humidifiers mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about humidifiers and why you think they're must haves especially in home offices yeah you want to make sure that 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 the air that you're breathing is um it has the right amount of moisture in it it's going to make your your skin better and your um your hair better like everything it, it and it's good for just for your lung quality um, or your breathing. Um, air filters are really good too. Air cleaners, um, you can find. The, I mean, you don't have to have something that's hooked up to your um, your furnace or your air conditioner, but you can have small units and put them in your office, and it can definitely improve that air quality in in your home um, relatively. Uh, cheaply too, or in, inexpensively, I should say. Um, but I think that it's, especially in the winter months, you need to have a little bit of humidity in your air to, um, it, it just helps your entire body and then the home too. If someone's going to go ahead and start making, you know, their own cleaners or their own this or that, what is the one thing you would say, this is 
the thing to start with? Like, you know, swap out this for that. Uh, window cleaner or window and glass cleaner is where I, it's kind of like my gateway drug because I say once you see how well that works and that you're not like people are more hesitant to like clean a toilet with a natural cleaner because they don't think it's going to clean, but they will try a window to clean a window or a mirror with the, um, is that just like vinegar and water basically? Um, uh, I have a recipe and it's water. And it's white vinegar and a little bit of rubbing alcohol or vodka. And that helps it to dry quickly, the rubbing alcohol. And um, you can put a couple drops of essential oil in it if you want a little bit of a scent. But that cleans windows. I've had people say that that recipe cleans windows better than any blue cleaner they've ever used. I'm assuming these recipes are in your books? They are, and they're also on my, um, on my website as well. Okay. Is there research that shows that cleaner homes make households happier and workers more productive? There's research about like regarding clutter and that if your home has that clutter actually causes stress. So if you remove the clutter from your home, you will have less stress in your home. And um, that's I agree. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's proven many times over and in, you can do the, an experiment in your own home and find the, those results as well, just because it, it is so apparent. So if you're starting from a messy, dirty house and, and you went down in like room order, where would you say is like the most important place to start getting clean and then kind of working through levels of importance? Yeah, I usually say to start with a kit your kitchen because that's oh the heart of the home. <laughs> <laughs> and um, with the, when you ha- when your kitchen is in order and working properly, that's going to be really helpful. That can be really overwhelming though too. And so if you're not wanting to start with your kitchen, you want to do something a little bit smaller. Then I will usually say go to your to clean a bathroom and. And like declutter it top to bottom, that's going to be the, you know, those two things are going to make a huge um, impact in your home. And then from there, you're going to want to go to like other spaces, like like your bedroom, closets, and kind of work through your home that way. Do you, are you knowledgeable about these water softeners and do you recommend them? Do they actually improve um, the value, not the value, but the, uh, I guess, help keep your home fresher and, and newer. Are they better for cleaning? Are they better for your skin? Or is it just one big marketing ploy? Oh, I think water softeners are huge. I mean, if you have hard water, you want a water softener because the, um, the minerals that are in water that is not, that are hard actually can corrode appliances and piping in your house and then it also leaves that film on um, like your dishwasher um, water filters anything else so you want having a um, like a whole house water softener will change a lot it also makes your um, like your your water works better your soap works better so you can get things cleaner um, whether it's your laundry or when you're shampooing your hair, things will rinse clean differently than if you if you if you need one, you should have one. It's definitely a good investment. Great. Well, Becky Rappinchuk, the website is cleanmama.com. She is known as the Clean Mama. That's M-A-M-A. She is the best-selling author of multiple books. Uh, just go on Amazon, type in her name, Becky Rappinchuk, R-A-P-I-N-C-H-U-K. Becky, any final thoughts you want to share with our listeners or anything else you want to promote? Yeah, I, I'm just th- thankful that you guys asked me to be here today. And I would encourage you to do one thing a day, even if it's something little like making your bed. Or if you don't want to make your bed, I would recommend... Um, like decluttering something, even if it's for five minutes, set a timer and um, declutter just a little bit. If you're working from home and you want to clean your your workspace, that's going to make you feel more productive to clean and clear that space. And um, it'll definitely make your workday a little bit smoother.
Becky Rappenchuk, thanks so much for joining us on the Work From Home Show. To all our listeners, check us out at workfromhomeshow.com. If you like this episode, please rate and review us on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, whatever podcasting platform you are using. Reach out to us, hello at workfromhomeshow.com. That's hello at workfromhomeshow.com. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, anything at all. And to all our homies, homeboys, homegirls, home trans, thank you for joining us on another episode. Until next time and next week, keep on working from home.